Okay, we are looking at a conceptual summary of confidence intervals for the population mean. And this is uh, pretty much putting together a whole lot of stuff we've been doing questions on and thinking about. And so it all comes from uh, our work on the probability density function. And there's this the actual function uh, at high school level. We don't really engage directly too much with that function um, because to find the probability of it, we have to take the integral. And um, you can see it uh, just in general form up the top there and, and more in standard standard form of the standard normal distribution. We have to take the integral of that. And usually um, that's on the fringe or beyond the scope of the course. And so we execute those calculations these days with the use of graphics calculator, it used to be tables. Um, and there's an example of one such situation where we have uh, the distribution, 95% of the distribution there is in between um, Z scores of negative and positive 1.96 or around about two standard deviations from the mean, which is zero. And we've also looked at um, the symmetrical nature of the distribution and we this means that for any normal distribution 95% of it will lie between those Z scores 1.96 standard deviations away from the mean okay so this locates 95% of the distribution in fact it's the middle 95% and this is where co confidence intervals build up from and we actually often use the 95% confidence level or the 95% confidence interval and this other ones too we've looked at 90% and uh, that's its associated Z scores 1.64 1.65 that's the three decimal places 1.645 and we get a 9% it locates 9% of the middle of the distribution and lastly the 99% likewise okay um, so the inverse normal too we can make use of that to determine Z scores for any area we require. So if it's some other area, we can um, use that to, to uh, locate the actual Z scores given, given the other information, like the probability or the, the proportion there. Confidence intervals uh, are based on sample means sometimes, okay? And that's what this video is about. Um, that's the stats we're using. And it can relate to the middle 90, 95, and 99 percent of normal distributions, whether they're standard or other types of normal distributions. We have seen that an approximate C percent that that usually is a number like 90, 95, 99, occasionally other numbers, an approximate C percent confidence interval is given to us by that formula uh, with two elements in it separated by brackets there, and the Z is, is related to the Z score we talked about there. So the probability from negative Z up to Z gives us the C, which is the percentage confidence level. And we see the formula that is broken into bits. We have S over square root of N, which is, is the proper name for that as a standard error. Okay, and that's, that's what we use um, there. Okay, and it's S is the standard um, deviation of the sample um, when sigma is not known and square root of n uh, according to the central limit theorem and x bar is the sample mean which comes from stats okay this whole part here and you see it here too because it's x minus that element and x plus that element that's actually called the margin of error which you should note if you haven't noted it so far. So Z times S over root N is the margin of error. Okay, and it gives us, uh, the, the, it helps us find the lower and the upper ends of the interval. Okay, there is a trade-off between the margin of error and the level of confidence. All right, the margin of error and the level of confidence. Now looking at a graph here, the margin of error graphically away from the mean um, exists above and below so you, it could be on either side of the mean the the more confidence confident we are the broader that confidence level zone becomes but that also means the margin of error increases as well if we look back here 
we can see the margin of error is there and there either side of the mean that's for 95 percent 90 percent we have lower confidence but the margin of error is less it's a it's a smaller margin of error if we're more confident we have a bigger margin of error okay it's greater so that's the trade-off okay so the more confident the, the more error so we have to think about the requirements in when we're applying this also greater confidence level means uh, larger margin of error which is that's what the e is as we said and that means we have less precision when we have that greater margin of error we have less precision decisions made regarding what percentage we use too has implications on the margin of error as i just showed you so um, that affects the precision as well so the higher percentage confidence means lower precision low margins of error might not be acceptable or feasible in the world uh, that we're applying this okay so we have to consider the applications of it and we do that through we practice that through some of the questions we do greater sample sizes means more precision because you have a narrower confidence interval and that means you have a more precise estimate for mu the, the population parameter set the mean of the population okay so increasing sample size means more precision and that's shown through a narrower confidence interval now because confidence intervals are based on sample means they're based on samples and sample means and so on sample standard deviations um, even if we're approximating it using the normal and it's all fine to do that according to the central limit theorem we have a, a substantial size sample um, there are always variations and thus uh, that's why X bar is considered a variable all right it's a variable so there are always variations in confidence levels uh, sorry in confidence intervals so the confidence interval it's itself is a variable in fact okay so there's, there's always variations not all of them contain mu the 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 population parameter the the mean of the population which is the important thing we're trying to estimate however the good news is most confidence intervals actually do contain mu not all of them but most of them do so if we have a 90 percent confidence interval situation here and some simulation was done okay so i'm just asking you to trust these little figures that have been supplied conveniently to you in this video and we have um basically uh a 90 percent the the it shows that um to cut a long story short um all of them bar one contained the population mean mu all right so all of these did except for that one didn't so that's nine out of ten okay um which is 90 percent so in that example there is uh is where we have the 90 percent confidence interval so we have um 9 out of 10 or 90% of the calculated confidence intervals, that's what's happening in this column here, can do contain the population mean. And that's the meaning of the 90% confidence interval. Okay, 90% of, of uh, such samples calculated in this manner um, basically will, con will contain the, the true population mean. Hence the term confidence. We have, we have confidence. We have 90% graphical way of looking at that too if that if that uh, happens to be the actual population mean we can see that um, the red dots are the sample means all right now one of these would be a point estimate but point estimates are risky they're easy they don't take many resources but they're risky okay your point estimate could have been that there that x bar there all of these red dots anyway are sample means okay so we have a confidence intervals likewise there okay and this one's got 20 okay so the thing is 19 out of 20 it's only it's only this one here 19 out of 20 contained 
see the dotted line contained mu. So that's 95%. That's an uh, expression of 95% confidence level. So 95% of all such confidence intervals will contain mu, the population mean. So it brings us to the correct interpretation of the C% percent confidence interval is that we expect approximately C, so you replace C with 90, 95, 99, C percent of such intervals to contain the population mean. Whether or not the particular confidence, confidence interval actually does contain mu is generally not known in the real world. Okay, so it is a confidence thing. It's not a total guarantee. So to conclude the video, something I've been meaning to do if you're studying math methods and specialist maths, math methods you've been learning things out of that column there and specialist maths you've also been learning stuff out of that column here and it's interesting to compare the two we have sample proportion versus sample mean and specialist maths we have categorical binomial type data going on in math methods whereas we have continuous data like kilos and minutes and seconds and stuff like that in specialist maths we have uh, the population parameter is little p versus mu okay we have p hat versus x bar so um, we have different sort of quantities going on standard deviation in math methods versus specialist maths the standard error for each of them the margin of error above and below x um, x bar or p hat all right, uh, they both live up to the standard normality, and we've we've seen that in both lots. And you should see my math methods playlist too for the math methods ones. Okay, normality condition is is a bit more vague. It's a little bit a little bit less uh, rigid in math methods in the in the uh, the sample proportion type stuff, but it's more ref more refined in the specialist maths. Um, if it's normal. Um, you don't need uh, to worry about the size of n, but central limit theorem um, is applicable um, otherwise for other sorts of distributions, which is great. And there's our formulas for confidence intervals for each of them there, whether it's population proportion, um, sample proportion versus sample mean, population mean. How's that?